This is Anderson Penn's podcast episode 195 for Tuesday, June 14th, 2016. This is Brian. This is Lisa. It's Radio Network. You sound very mellow today. <laughs> very, very white, maybe. Yeah. Awesome. Got to be a little um, deeper for Barry White. Can you believe our daughter turned 21 yesterday? Yes, 21. <laughs> I can't believe that. That should be illegal. And she you didn't were, even go what, out. Eight, eight when you had her? <laughs> nice. Yeah, that's what it was. No, she didn't even go out. Good for her. Nope. I wonder if that means they'll just live it up this weekend. Uh, she, she messaged me, said that she was having a Mike's Hard Lemonade. All right, well, you know, one mics, that's fine. I can live with that. So I think, so, I think we did all right. Happy birthday to her. Hmm? I said happy birthday to Linz. Absolutely. Um, do we want to mention, before we get into item number one, do we want to mention something that happened this week at the store? An expansion of sorts? Um, I said you could have a Father's Day pen. Yes, there we go. No. <laughs> um, I, I think we should. Would you like to handle that? Uh, why don't you? Because I have to go close the door over here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, Brooke the cat is going to get in there and cause all sorts of mischief. And next thing you know, there'll be this big furry black uh, tail swooping around. Um, we have been on a bit of a... Uh, hiring frenzy lately and uh, I don't see any end in sight uh, but we would like to announce that we have hired a brand new super awesome marketing director and I didn't think that the person who we hired would actually ever be available and the way that it worked out I I'm just incredibly excited so. We um, have had the incredible pleasure and honor of being able to hire um, Mr. Eric Orozco of FP Geeks fame and the uh, FP TV and the Pen O'Clock News. Uh, he is now working for us. Uh, handling marketing and social media and all sorts of other stuff. What? <laughs> marketing. <laughs> Is he, he's in the chat. Uh, stirring things up. So, <laughs> so uh, everybody start to send Eric all sorts of awesome, cool emails. It's eric at andersonpens.com. So, <laughs> watch, his, watch, his, watch his blow up with all sorts of crazy stuff. Oh, that's uh, the good news for the week. That That is. We are super excited. Um, marketing and social media is something that we just um, really haven't gotten to much. Uh, we've been too busy just trying to do all the other things. And uh, we're just excited to be able to have someone who knows his way around all of this, who can handle it. Um, he's well known in the community. Uh, and if we work it right, he'll, uh, he'll work for pens. He probably will. <laughs> he may not know that yet. but uh, So anyway, that was um, super exciting to be able to uh, to work that out. Absolutely. So, uh, thanks for joining us. Go. <laughs> yes. Uh, this week's topic for discussion. Uh, you know, we had a couple fun things that we were um, bandying about, and we decided to go with um, – the top seven pens to take on a summer outing. And Brian and Eric were giving me a hard time about the term outing. Um, I could have sworn that when Brian was mowing the yard the other day, he had a pen in his pocket. No. I could have sworn you did. No. So it got me thinking, well, what should you have in your pocket if you're going to mow the yard, wash your car, you know, go hiking, go to for a, a picnic, you know, a family, watch your son at a baseball game, any kind of a summer outing, what should you have in your pocket? And Brian's answers were sailor, pilot, sailor, pilot, sailor, pilot. 
Um, to which I, I, I kind of disagreed. I, I don't know that you should mow the, the lawn with, you know, your Sailor Makarta in your pocket. No, I, I mow the lawn with a t-shirt, not, not a Sailor We were Makarta. doing something with a shirt that had a pocket um, outdoors. Maybe you were making a fire or, or getting the table ready for our... Um, a party that we had over the weekend. You you were doing something and you had a, a not inexpensive pen in your pocket and it just kind of it occurred to me later that that was kind of an outdoorsy kind of thing. So it got me thinking what would be some good pens to take with you if you're going on some kind of a summer outing. Okay. All right. I'm, so, I'm game. Yeah. That's that's what what, all, what qualifies a pen to be on this list? Uh, I think it needs to be durable. You know, you don't want to bring something incredibly fragile or incredibly rare. Uh, I think that it needs to be um, expendable, fairly easily replaceable, just in case. Okay, your lawnmower eats it up. Uh, I think it needs to be dependable, something that's going to um, not be finicky because if you are trying to, I don't know, eat your lunch outside and write some notes, that even that could be an outing, but it should be uh, something that is going to be uh, reliable and start up right away and not give you a hard time. All right. All right. Go. Uh, number one. The, you have the first four and I have the last three. I have I most have of them, yep. Uh, number one, and, and these are in no particular order. I suppose they should be, but oh well. Uh, the Pilot Metropolitan. What? <laughs> There's uh, notes from the peanut gallery. No, no big um, crystal. No big crystal. So Pilot Metropolitan. Um, now we uh, sell a ton of these. These are great for a newbie, great for a kick around pen. Um, metal body, which of course is wonderful. That makes it durable. Um, steel nib, um, just a really reliable writer. Um, for $15, if something happens, you're not out of fortune. It comes with the converter and a cartridge, um, which is a nice feature. And, um, you know, who doesn't like some of these fun colors? Awesome. I like the retro pops, actually. Yeah, those are fun. All right, so that was... Okay, um, that's for number one. All right, number two, again, in no particular order, uh, the Lamy Safari or All-Star. Uh, personally, I would probably bring the metal All-Star, uh, simply because it is metal, but the plastic Safari. Um, also very durable, um, kind of a kick around pen on the lower end of the price point, which is what you want if you're going to take it out in the wild. Um, you can clip clip that in your pants pocket. Too, you could, probably. you could. Um, nice big clip. Nice. You know, you can also clip it. Uh, you know, on the inside of your shirt. I never know if that's really secure or not. I've seen you and Eric do it. Uh, no, I don't actually do it anymore. I, clip it I, I always have pockets. Okay. But uh, I, I I did that once and I lost a pen, but yeah. uh, that was the last time I did it. Again, also cartridge and converter. So you can just pop a cartridge in and toss another one in your backpack or even your pocket, whatever well, you're doing. Cartridge is what you want. You yes. Know, you always keep a little box in your car or something. Absolutely. So that's an All option. Right. Mm -hmm. What is next? Kuwaiko, now I didn't um, bring home the Brass Sport. The, the Brass Sport would absolutely be my first choice because that's hard to kill. Uh, but just any of the Kuwaiko sports, the Classic Sport, the, the Ice Sport, sport um, the All Sport, you can uh, just pop this in your pocket by itself. You can clip it to your pocket with the um, add-on clip. Cartridge only, so you can toss a couple international cartridges in your bag or your pocket, your purse, whatever. Uh, but yep. since it's tiny, it'll fit in a pocket. 
Yeah, it'll fit. It, it'll fit anywhere. It's a nice, exactly. nice thing. So that would be a good option. But it's not. It's not too small to get lost. Like a little, a little put, I'd be worried about that. that yeah, getting. that's super skinny. Now the next one um, is a little bit higher priced, but any of the pilot vanishing points, I just grabbed one. Probably not the one I would take out in the wild. <laughs> <laughs> You're giving me grief for, for having a sailor on your arm. just grabbed one. You want to grab another and one you've from got the a chair, Was that a cherry bamboo? A cherry bamboo. But any of the metal-bodied uh, vanishing points. By the way, points. it's more expensive than any sailor that I would not care. Brian, focus. <laughs> Stands upright in your pocket, takes a cartridge or a converter, use the cartridge. Um, super easy, super fast. Everybody should have a vanishing point. I They're firmly great, that. great pens. I, uh, yeah, it shows that's really the only thing, one of the few things that I have because I'll need to, you know, you'll, you'll always see me with at least two in my pocket. Um, they're just handy, handy pens to have. And extra cartridges. You just pop it in and. Yeah, I forget the cartridge part, but I, I only use cartridges in my vanishing point. I don't use the converter because I like to be able to see the ink level. So this is one of the few pens I'll actually use a cartridge on. Don't we have cartridges in the VIP box? We now carry extra cartridges with us. And yes, I know. We have them on the shelf. I just need to pull them off. I have some in my office. So anyway, so. Uh, moving on. So pilot vanishing point just for the convenience uh, definitely is the probably the priciest of all the options. Uh, yeah, yeah. For the ballpoint and rollerball people, don't stone me. Any um, you know Oh yeah, okay. I thought I forgot you had one. I have one too. So yes, any of the retro fifty ones are awesome. Phenomenal writers. Uh, nice tight clip. Slips into a pocket. Uh, I always keep one in my backpack. Yep. I always have one in just my purse. In, just in case. Uh, just a, a really good writer. I like uh, that it twists. Um, there are some that do have a click action, but I prefer the the twist. Um, really good option just to toss in your backpack. I don't know that you'd be taking notes at a picnic, but just if you feel the need to have a pen with you at any given time, these are some good options. And what do you have? Well, I know I said the lily put might be too small uh, of a pen, and my next pen is a ballpoint pen, and I know a lot of people will carry these as part of their everyday carry, um, the Fisher bullet, the space pen. Uh, primarily for the the refill, um, you know, posted this is a as a nice nice length of a pen, um, and of course Fisher makes more than just a bullet. But um, if you need something, you know, this is a good pen that you 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 can even throw in your your car or something. But easily slips into your pocket. You you know you don't have to worry about it. It'll write on anything anywhere. Um, good good option, I think. And last, but certainly not least, now this one is um, perhaps the most, uh, I would say the most fragile of the bunch, but uh, easily expendable. Um, the, the Platinum Preppy. Um, biggest complaint here is maybe the clip is uh, a little too, um, too soft to be thrown over the side of a, a pair of jeans or something, but the pen always works. It starts up right away. Uh, once you've got a cartridge in there, um, they're surprisingly good and good little pens. So, um, and yeah, you can always give them away too. So yeah, w once you get them started, it seems to take a little bit of time to get them started. But once they start writing, they're really good little writers. Well, you just you just give them a, a couple of flicks of the wrist the first time, and then you're you're all set, done. So, so all on the wrist. So all on the wrist. So that's just a kind of a quick. I'm sure there are, there's a hundred different other options. We did uh, have outside a, of the. What's that? We had one more. We had one more. Oh yeah, there's a write-in. Yeah. That, now, it's, now, which one are we talking? We could talk about any on this one. Um, a tool pen. I keep one in my purse, at all times. You've got um, the nine. Now this is the older version. Um, it's multi-sided. It's got the level. It's got the. Um, Stylus at the top. This one is a ballpoint. But there is a fountain pen version. There is a fountain pen. But in the top. Steel nib. Yeah. 
you've got a flat head, see if I can get it out, and a Phillips head screwdriver. Uh, you never know when you're going to need something. It's those have come in handy. We've we've uh, we've used those around the around the shop uh, on a number of occasions. We have, and and a couple times I'll be out um, shopping, especially at some of the craft stores for some props for the photography or or whatever. Um, and it's nice to have um, the ruler on it. I like that a lot. So I think that. Um, if you need to carry something with you and maybe you don't want to do a fountain pen, um, the tool pen or the retro is certainly a good option. So there you go. The top eight pens to take. All um, right. Um, Seven plus so, one. So, yeah, you know, outside of the vanishing point, everything on that list is, you know, it's 40 bucks or under, really. Um, the tool, tool fountain pen is 50, but um, fairly inexpensive. So. Um, interesting list. Uh, let us know what you think. Um, give us your options. Uh, speaking of uh, letting us know what, letting <laughs> um, Q and A. You're stuck on that, are you? I'm stuck on that. Letting yeah. us know what you want to know. Yes, there we go. All right. Um, Thought we'd add a little Q and A section to the podcast. Uh, we had a couple of write-in questions this week. We'll pick the top three, uh, and we will uh, push the rest off for another podcast. Um, I'll just jump right in. Uh, I will ask the question. You can take the first one if you'd like. Sure. Um, Sue asks, uh, "I am looking for a good permanent water-resistant ink to use for addressing envelopes." What do you recommend, and how do you clean this type of ink out of a pen? Well, if you're looking for something with color, especially for addressing envelopes, uh, I would use one of the Diatramentous uh, document inks. Uh, they come in a range of colors. You've got black, turquoise, fuchsia, um, green, red. There's even a fog gray and a couple others, um, as well as the Rohr and Klingner document inks as well. Um, they, it's nice to find um, a document ink in something other than just black, so the colors are really fun. Um, now, some people do uh, still like to protect writing on envelopes by putting either some candle, you know, rubbing a candle over it to put a little wax over it or something like that. Um, we often get mail that's, that's been rubbed with wax. Um, which makes it shiny and um, just in case it, it gets wet, I think people aren't sure if their water is, is water resistant or not. Uh, but the Diatramentous document inks and the Roar and Cleaner document inks would both be a really good option. And to clean them out, um, you can uh, use something like JB Pen Flush if it's been sitting around for a little while or if you're not sure um, the best way to clean it out. Uh, just empty out the ink initially and then flush and fill into the bottle three, four, five times and then flush and fill with water again to get that out of the pen. Um, it also works really well if you've got a pen that's a little finicky. Um, you could use cold water, but uh, JB's works a little bit more thoroughly, a little faster. Yeah, and if you're cleaning, I, I like I like to use at the shop. I like to use a bulb wrench to get most of the ink out of the the section first, and then I put it in. Um, you know, either then fill it with with the JBs or put it in the water and let it uh, and let it soak. So it's great stuff, JBs. Uh, question number two, Martin asks, do you expect Mont Blanc to ever release non-contaminated golden yellow ink, or is it just gone forever? So for those of you who uh, have not been following the news, uh, Mont Blanc just recently um, uh, announced that uh, they, there were problems with the golden yellow ink. Uh, they are offering an exchange program. You can have details uh, are on, on our blog. Um, but it's a lovely color, and uh, Martin wants to know if, uh, if they are going to re-release the color. Um, so as far as we know and, and that they've indicated to us there there are plans to release a new batch of golden yellow ink at some point 
um, at this time, uh, there's no official uh, time frame for release. So um, that's the best best we can say. They they do plan on on making uh, making more. Just uh, when it is uh, is could be anybody's guess. So um, I guess that's the best. Uh, Best we can say on that. So stay tuned, and we'll definitely let you know when it's coming, and we'll definitely have it back in stock. So. Hopefully, they'll come out with it. Um, usually, they're pretty good about fixing things once they realize or once they've acknowledged there's a problem. Um, well, that's a loud car. Uh, and they certainly were, um, I won't say chatty, but uh, quite upfront with us. Uh, when we did hear from them. Now, it did take a while, uh, so who knows how long it takes to actually track where the problem started, if it was a, you know, if it was in the, the big container they cook it in, if it was in the bottling, if it was, you know, who knows where the problem um, started. So they may be still doing some research, but hopefully once they can figure that out, um, it certainly did prove to be a more popular color than I thought for a yellow. So well, it's got some nice, it's got some nice shading to it. So yeah, I think that's why I think that's why people like it. So. Uh, third question this evening: When will the Pilot Con Forty converter be available, separate from a vanishing point? Now, for those of you who don't know, the new Con Forty was um, we showed it off back in February when John Lane from Pilot came out to see us, and. Uh, it will eventually replace both the Con 50 and the Con 20. And it has actually started to ship in the new um, blue matte vanishing point that was just released uh, a couple weeks ago. But it uh, is not currently available separately. Brian? Mike, yeah. Um, OK. <laughs> uh, I was reading the chat there. Uh, yeah, so it's not available separately. It's not available in separate new units. Um, the best information we have at this time, uh, they will be available sometime in maybe perhaps January, early 2017. Our last time to order the old converters uh, is going to be in the fall, around September. And so once that time comes, we'll get that's our last chance to stock up on those. If you're interested in the Con 20s or you like the Con 50s, uh, that may be your last chance to get them until supplies run out, and then the Con 40 should be coming in the, uh, in the, the first quarter of next year. So, uh, but you, if you if you like the matte blue, it's it's already in there. Much to our surprise, when we opened it up and we're taking pictures, there's the Con 40. So, um, and it does for those of you interested, the Con 40 does fit in the uh, E95S, uh, where the Con 50 did not. So, if you don't like the Con 20. Uh, and you do happen to like the matte blue vanishing point, you can steal that converter from the pen and uh, and you're good to go. So, which is good to know. It is, yeah. So, um, we will uh, we will continue some Q and A type stuff uh, in the future. Uh, the yeah. email address for. I was going to say that uh, we had some really interesting questions uh, come in, even though we um, uh, we didn't post the question all that early. Um, so it was it was great to get uh, quite the response that we got. So thank you. Keep the questions coming. So uh, QA at AndersonPens.com. Uh, let's do real quick what's going on in the store and uh, around the, uh, the web. OK. Um, what you got? A couple, couple highlights basically from the last two, two mailers, if you're not on the mailing list. Uh, last week, we featured Rotring. We had some new old stock rotring, some really cool stuff, 400s, um, sprees, and that stuff pretty much blew out except for a couple 600 newtons. Um, if you like those, now those are excellent. Um, you know, those would fit in that uh, pen to take on an outing category too. I mean, these things are bomb proof, 600s. Um, so we got a couple of those. Uh, and this week, uh, a pen you don't see very often, you don't hear about it. Um, it's a German manufacturer with the French name, Elise. Um, we've got uh, a couple of roller balls, ballpoints, mechanical pencils, and an interesting note on an extra option that actually is interchangeable with the roller ball. So you can make a fountain pen out of the roller ball and that 
fountain pen section. So interesting stuff, very classy looking pen. The nib is nib on that fountain pen is just gorgeous. Uh, really nice two-tone uh, 18 karat design. So um, cool stuff. So we've got a couple interesting things uh, on that. Um, we've got uh, a surprise uh, that uh, came to us on Saturday. Um, organic Studio inks are now back in stock. Uh, at least the first batch of uh, what 14, 15 colors uh, and samples. Uh, those are um, uh, now available. So, it uh, I wouldn't call it a, a total surprise. I mean, we knew it was coming. Uh, well, yes, we just yes. didn't think that it would be here until next week, until this week. And so it did come in on Saturday, and um, by the time that uh, the shipping staff got in on Monday, uh, quite a bit of it had already sold. And we will have um, samples and bottles, and uh, down the road there will be some other colors. Um, we don't know what is coming uh, down the line. Tyler said that um, in the time between when he went off to grad school and stopped making organic sinks and now when he came back some of the dyes that he used on some of the inks have been discontinued so some of the colors may not be coming back exactly the way they were or may not come back at all uh, but i couldn't tell you which ones and these these you know there's some nice colors and there's some blues um you know green and some, some good stuff so uh check it out uh, on the blog, we've got a couple of interesting things. Um, our resident artiste, uh, Chris, is doing some great stuff. Um, if you want to see some really cool uh, artwork, uh, Flag Day and Father's Day just out today. Um, a couple of the latest pieces that he's he's put up, as well as uh, Think Thursday uh, for this past week. Uh, we're looking at some Blackstone Black Stump. I think so. Um, really, really, really talented, talented artist he is. Yep. And uh, speaking of ink, uh, we also will have more um, book binders and Blackstone. Uh, they each have three more colors that are coming in and uh, should be here this week, I believe. So that was exciting. We have uh, any shout outs this week? Well, there's one. Just one. Um, it's a big one. Happy birthday to uh, Lindsay, who turned 21 yesterday. And, who, will, uh, who, who will never hear this. <laughs> <laughs> no, but we can still say it. So happy birthday, Lindsay. We love you a lot. And um, be safe, please. All right. Anything else? No. Uh, just, uh, I know. I, I switched it up on you, and now I'm all discombobulated. Sorry. Um, check us out on Twitter, Facebook, Pinterest, Instagram, Periscope, and all other social media as Anderson Pens. Blog is blog.andersonpens.com. And the website is andersonpens.com. Thanks so much for listening to our podcast. We will see you next week. Have a good night, everyone.